Hey all, welcome to Shaltrek. This is Raj here. Friends, I've been through the press release from CRISPR Therapeutics about their strategic directions for 2024. And um, uh, I think it is looking good to me overall. The latest press release from CRISPR Therapeutics provides strategic direction that they plan for 2024. The statement is very encouraging and positive. And the release addresses the following themes. The first one is diverse therapeutic area. Second is strong capital position. Third is progress with CASJV. Fourth is expansion of treatment centers for CASJV. Uh, fifth is innovation and research efforts. Sixth is expansion of clinical trials. Uh, and then they are talking about the YSET collaboration, which is appearing like a setback, but I don't think it is, and I'll explain that. And finally, they also talk about their in vivo programs and how they are taking it. So I put a link to the press release in the description for those of you who would like to read it from the source. I would now like to give you my analysis and conclusions. Let's get started. Welcome back, friends. The two statements that stood out to me in that press release happened at the very beginning. They sound very bullish to me and they are very encouraging to me. So the first statement is that we are well positioned to execute on our clinical trials across therapeutic areas, including oncology, autoimmune, cardiovascular, and diabetes, setting up a catalyst rich 12 to 18 months for the company. Catalyst rich 12 to 18 months for the company. I just imagine positive catalyst because no one plans for negative catalyst. So it looks very, very bullish to me and that alone got me. And uh, then if we go ahead, the next statement that's very bullish is that they are saying, even in this challenging macroeconomic en environment for biotech companies, our strong capital position, they have almost $1.9 billion in their balance sheet. So they are saying, even in this uh, difficult macroeconomic condition for uh, biotech companies, our strong capital position and efficient operating model provides us with a competitive advantage to expand upon our leadership in the space. That's a very bullish statement and it bodes very well for CRISPR therapeutics. And as I mentioned before, I like the management here and I like the CEO, the way he has been handling the company. So I take the words the way they are and I think uh, this is a very bullish uh, statement for 2024, shows a lot of confidence and uh, resolve in the company. Apart from, the, from, from that, we have the news that the FDA has assigned a prescription uh, drug user fee or Purdue for uh, action date of March 30 for cash JV in TDT. So now that will start the TDT revenue stream also. So that's a very uh, positive news. And the starting is going to be after March 30th, 2024, when they get the approval. And they are saying additional re regulatory submissions for cash JV are currently under review in Switzerland and the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia with the submission in Canada planned for the first half of 2024. The way I read this is that more wealthy countries with the means to afford the treatment are coming into the fold and they're coming in gradually and uh, that's going to only increase the market for CASJV. And then there was some criticism earlier uh, in the SA article which was saying they can't treat uh, for patients below 12 years of age. So the, uh, the statement also says to tackle the under 12 year old, we have news that CRISPR has completed enrollment in two global phase three studies of CASJV in patients five to 11 years of age with sickle cell disease or TDT. So very soon we should have uh, data from there and along with the previous approval for about 12 years old, it becomes much, uh, much more likely that the below 12 years uh, age category will also potentially get some approval. And the, the positive thing is that they have started making movement in that direction, so that's really good. And on the delivery front also, the news is positive, and I have already made a video on this before, but here is a summary. Vertex is engaging with experienced hospitals to establish a network of authorized uh, treatment centers throughout the US to offer CASJV to patients. Nine authorized training centers have been activated within the US and three in the Europe, uh, with the goal of uh, activating approximately 50 uh, treatment centers in the US and 25 in EU. Additionally, Vertex announced an agreement with a major medication contracting organization. The name of that organization is Synergy Medication Collective, and it covers nearly 100 million lives in the US and uh, to provide access to CASJV through an outcomes-based contract. We need to get more details about the outcomes-based contracts, but they have followed the same strategy like Bluebird, so this is a very positive. It shows the adaptiveness in the management, being pragmatic and uh, trying to get things moving. So uh, it looks good. And also, friends, when I talk about outcome-based based contract, 
uh, outcome based contracts allows you to get into the field and over a period of two or three years the outcomes will be well documented and after that the contract will be there it won't be based on outcomes because outcomes will be a given that's my prediction for the long term i am most enthused by their targeting uh, targeted conditioning program which they announced in this press release because that will be a major catalyst for all their therapies where it can be used news is that crispr continues to advance its internal targeted conditioning program an anti cd117 antibody drug conjugate or adc through clinical uh, preclinical studies i believe that this when approved uh, will give uh, a lot of uh, enhancement to the effect of casjv because uh, as a conditioning agent it should be much better uh, than uh, the busulfan that they are using currently and it will also create uh, additional sales pipeline on captive market let me explain the term captive market a bit imagine you are running a art class where all students are contracted to you to learn uh, drawing uh, and painting when you have a captive market to whom you can sell supplies uh, of the next level of training like for these students you can supply uh, paint you can supply canvases you can supply pencils all the art material so these are all uh, captive market and that way if you look at patients who buy castevi treatment they can be captive market to buy the conditioning agent for a better outcome and experience right now the conditioning agent is in the preclinical uh, trials i mean preclinical um, studies so once it gets into phase 1 we will start seeing some data from it if it's any good i think that's going to be a positive catalyst for uh, uh, for crispr therapeutics and now we have more details about the bill and melinda gates grant that uh, was there around 14.5 million dollars crispr says that it has ongoing research efforts to enable in vivo editing of uh, hematopoietic stem cells this work supported in part by a, a 14.5 million grant from the bill and melinda gates foundation could obviate the need for conditioning altogether and expand geographic reach and enable the treatment of multiple additional other diseases beyond sickle cell disease and uh, beta thalassemia and that i think is a very very positive news and uh, we now have more color into what they are doing for bill and melinda gates then also crispr therapeutics plans to initiate a clinical trial of ctx112 in systemic uh, lupus erythromyces or sle in the first half of 2024 with the potential to expand into additional autoimmune indications in future early clinical studies have shown that cd19 directed autologous scar t therapy can produce long lasting remissions in multiple autoimmune im- indications crispr therapeutics is expanding trials of ctx131 into hematologic malignancies including t and b cell malignancies in addition to ongoing clinical trials in solid tumors the way i look at it is that this is like finding new use for existing product very good for the bottom line because economies of scale can come because they can produce the same but it will be going for different applications so the aggregate of all of that is going to bring economies of scale and add to the bottom line so that's what i am thinking it's again a positive development and we also have news that crispr is working on liquid nanoparticle delivery mechanisms for their liver related therapies so that's that's again a uh, interesting uh, news to have so working on uh, delivery mechanism is also important because aavs and lentiviruses can only do so much phase 1 for ctx320 is ongoing and enrolling patients again a positive movement forward and in mid 2024 we will know about two more in vivo programs from crispr therapeutics one targeting a common disease and the other targeting rare diseases these are all part of the uh, statement that they gave i'm just giving you a uh, summary and the essence of their communication and now i come to the point which got us all very worried uh, the headline that i showed you earlier read that vertex uh, uh, breaks ties with uh, crispr therapeutics for a t1d drug that's not the case let me give you much clearer communication on this um, the talk about why side dropping out of vctx211 uh, now called ctx211 from feb 2024 was labeled as vertex drops out why side is a subsidiary of vertex so if why sides decide to why side decides to drop out of vctx211 which is now called ctx211 Uh, in their collaboration with crispr that's not a big deal because vertex is still related to uh, crispr therapeutics and their collaboration continues and uh, this break up between uh, viasite and uh, uh, vertex for ctx211 will happen in february 2024 probably end of uh, next month 
and uh, CRISPR expects to take it um, CTX2112 to uh, the next phases of uh, through the first phase of approval and all the way to monetization. So they are continuing, they are pledged to continue with the work and uh, they are pledged to have a solution for T1D. And the completion date of the clinical trial for CTX2112 uh, uh, is 2025. So I think that that will be another catalyst because now it will become wholly owned by CRISPR Therapeutics. Of course, there will be some royalties that they may have to pay to Viasite because Viasite had paid them monies earlier. But suffice to say, my conclusion is that nothing is wrong with CRISPR Therapeutics. Everything is good. And this is a very, very strong statement from the uh, management. They have given us a signal that they are confident, they have all the money that they need, they are in a very strong financial position to pursue all their goals, and that they are going to complete their type 1 diabetes, and that they are going to have multiple catalysts in the next 18 months. So this is going to be a very eventful period. And they also disclosed how they are going to address the sickle cell disease market. They are advancing on the TDT. Um, come March uh, 2024, they would get uh, approval and probably in uh, the second quarter of 2024, they would be addressing the TDT market as well. And they have a huge um, partner who is covering 100 uh, million uh, Americans. So that will open up for TDT as well. The only thing that we need to know now about is uh, what are the terms of the outcome-based uh, um, approval uh, with this organization for, uh, for the sickle cell disease therapy. Once we find out those details, that can add more color. But overall, there is nothing not to like. And I can see that CRISPR Therapeutics did very well today. Uh, this news came in the morning. And right now, uh, CRISPR Therapeutics has already gained a lot and just broken through resistances. Let me take you to the price chart. Here we are in the price chart for CRISPR Therapeutics. And you can see very clearly that um, we have gained 3.33%. Yesterday, I was talking about this line of resistance, 61.66. And I also mentioned yesterday that the 50-day exponential moving uh, average is a very critical support. If we fall below this, then we are in trouble. So we have bounced off it, and now we have converted this resistance at 61.66 into an additional support. So now we have two levels of support, at least one support before we fall to the 50-day exponential moving average. Now we just have to break through this 9-day exponential moving average and this diagonal line of support from the previous uh, bull channel, which now becomes a diagonal line of resistance. And I'm thinking that that can happen tomorrow. So overall, I'm really happy about this, my friends. And um, this brings me to an end of my video. Uh, I had to scramble through this quickly because I just discovered this uh, these set of articles when I came to my studio and started looking at news for the day. So I should have caught this early in the morning. Apologies for that, but um, this is the best I could do. So I have this video out for you right now, but tomorrow we'll have a different video. With that, my friends, I hope you like this. And um, um, I, I hope you don't draw the wrong conclusion about CRISPR therapeutics. This is my interpretation. Of course, this is not financial advice. This is my personal opinion. Please do your own analysis. I put the link to the uh, article in the uh, description below so you can read it for yourself and see if your conclusions match with mine. So just to summarize, everything is good with CRISPR therapeutics. In my opinion, this is a very strong statement. Only expect CRISPR therapeutics share price to keep going up from here. With that, my friends, I'd like to bring this video to an end. Thanks and have a great day. Bye for now.